Hello there and welcome to this really fun, I know it's going to be fun, I know it's going to be deep, pick a card reading for the Venus Starport Point event today. That's what's happening. It is 10-22-2022. Big time energies happening today with the Libra Star Point um, going into, or the Venus Star Point going into Libra. Um, and I'm going to be facilitating a live later on today on Fireside, simulcasted on YouTube on my YouTube channel and we're going to be doing an energy update and um, general oracle reading and answering questions and hopefully there's um, some good engagement there with people showing up and wanting to get on stage on fireside you can get on stage and I can you can uh, just have that be an audio thing so people can just hear you or you can do video too so I hope that you join me later on fireside unfortunately it's only for Apple products so um, iPhone uh, computers obviously and iPads you can download the app and join in on fireside you can also watch on your browser and you can um, send emojis and uh, interact that way but you cannot get on stage through the browser um, and then you can watch and text on YouTube as well. So, but you cannot get on stage. And unless other people are also watching the YouTube stream, they're not going to see what you're saying because they're on fireside. They're going to be on fireside. And, and so they would actually have to have a uh, <laughs> phone and a, and a PC set up to do both or, or some somehow do both. So if you can get on the Fireside app itself um, because that is the best way to experience and engage with the show and engage with me and all that good stuff. Okay, so with that said, that's going on uh, today on Fireside, 4.30 Pacific. So again, energy update, oracle reading, getting into Venus star point. I can help you figure out your Venus star point if you haven't yet or don't know how. Um, and I'm going to put a link in the description here for my Substack newsletters, which um, will point you in the direction of finding out what you need to know about this event, uh, hopefully before the event. But even if you're seeing this video after the event, uh, you can still participate in everything. Uh, don't let that stop you if it's afterwards. Um, the energy, uh, the energy work and the spirit walk is going to be just as potent whether you join me live or not. So uh, don't let that, you know, uh, stop you. <laughs> For sure, still do, still watch, still get all the messages, do the whole thing, and then do the spirit guide. Now, if I really, I'm very itchy in my head and my scalp. I got a lot of third eye and um, crown chakra stuff going on. I've been tingling and buzzing like madness all week. So, and I've even gotten a few new energy welds. If you know me, you know what that's about. It's just when I'm processing so much energy that, um, that my body literally can't process it all. And so I'll actually break out in these like really gnarly, um, like blisters basically. Um, all different sizes. They can contain blood or just fluid or they can look like just get really deep and swollen kind of like a bug bite, but they're not. It's really rare, so it shouldn't be part of many other people's experiences because not everybody is me and who I am and what I do and, and all that stuff. Um, and the the mass amount of, of energy and light and information and timelines that I'm connected to um, is not what the typical person is. So. Um, but so I am extra itchy. So if you see me itch a lot, I've got that going on <laughs> just so you know, um, could be my head just I'm it's just a lot of energy. Um, okay, so with that said, <laughs> we are going to be doing 
got my cards here. We are going to be doing three pick a card um, readings. And we are going to be using two Oracle decks. The first one is the Divine Feminine. And this is what the book looks like. That's the Mary Magdalene card. Um, I love that card. I got that card. Uh, pulled that card myself last time. And uh, I absolutely love connecting with Mary Magdalene. We are pretty tight, as am I and uh, the one called Jesus, or who I call Rabbit. Um, and so we're going to get... I believe one card from each deck for each reading. So it'll be one, two, three reading. So you're going to have to decide. And here's the Moonology deck. This is the other deck we're going to be using today. Um, <clears throat> why the Moonology deck? Well, for two reasons. Uh, the Divine Feminine and femininity. Everything feminine is expressed through our beautiful moon. And in just a couple of days, on the 25th, on Tuesday the 25th, we have a partial new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. So, I believe it's in Scorpio. Yeah, it's in Scorpio. Um, okay, so, and this is the moonology. And I do go to the books, you guys. If you know me, you know we go to the books and then I get extra information when we're in the books. Again, this is a general reading. So take what applies to you from any of this and let go of the rest. Um, absorb it. Watch it a couple of times. Take notes. Close your eyes. Meditate. Do all that stuff. To really tap in on which reading is for you. Maybe it's all three. If you can't decide, maybe it's all three readings. If you really feel drawn to one over the other, then, or others, then go for that. If you're feeling two, then re then listen to all, listen to those two. So, you know, um, <sighs> I'm not going to associate crystals with these readings because I don't want that to sway you. It's just going to be the cards and it's just going to be one, two, and three, the first, second, or third reading. And we are going to get started here. Um, so I'm not going to spend any time getting into what the Venus star point is about. Suffice it to say, I've written two Substack posts about it. Um, and the first one is explaining explaining it um, along with some other stuff that's going on with planets and um, astrology. Uh, and what the Venus star point is about. Generally, I uh, point you in the direction of a couple of videos to watch. So you can be all in the know about it and books to read and websites to go to. I give you all the information in that post. So I don't want to waste time here doing that. Um, but I'm extremely excited about this event. I'm just as excited as like the 222-2022 event that I facilitated. That was like a a month-long workshop or whatever and also same thing with the Lionsgate 8-8 um, eight, eight. those were the two biggest ones that we've had this year um, another really big long um, several week workshop for the Lionsgate um, as well and truly this is we've had the um, Equinox uh, we've had solstices, um, which were also important and big. We've had, uh, of course, lots of full moons and new moons this year as we're into the end of October. Whew. And, uh, but, and and but, this, uh, this event this Venus star point is definitely, to me, aside from those 
that were those that I just mentioned, the two and the eight, um, February and uh, August. Aquarius and Leo, respectively. Um, aside from those, this is definitely the like big news of the year when it comes to portals and um, paradigm shifts, energy shifts, um, internal, external, micro, macro, um, galactic, uh, planetary. Uh, portals um, and, and gates and especially I mean aside from constantly working with Mercury to uh, help us balance and adjust and scrub stuff out and get into alignment with things um, this connection with Venus I'd say, uh, aside from, you know, there's, there is a lot going on definitely with Jupiter, Mars and Pluto for sure. But with Venus, what we have going on is really special and, um, she's been coming in more and more and more with me personally over the last couple of years and this really being a big thing um, feeling so super connected with her and her energy and what she brings in the two sides of her the warrior goddess the the love goddess um, energy and 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 that balance that she brings in for the divine feminine <clears throat> excuse me that isn't all of us regardless of what your gender is um the divine feminine the divine masculine um is alive in in all of us um in everything in creation and um the the trick is balance of those energies so um back to the two posts that I did, I told you about the first one, which was me telling you about the Venus star point. And then yesterday, last night, I sent out a, and I, <clears throat> and I posted a new one. And that was about how to prepare for the Venus star point event. So if you have not subscribed to my Substack yet, please do so. Um, again, link, <clears throat> excuse me, link is in the description read those posts, watch the videos, um, if you can before, before the event, and then if not after, and then just do everything when it works for you. Um, but the big deal about today with what I'm facilitating is definitely going to be, um, the, the spirit walk. Uh, those are always really quite magical and amazing. I facilitate, uh, spirit walk, guided astral, meditations where it's astral travel energy work clearing work channeling happens at that time too um and i'm almost always channel I, like gaia is there every single time um whether i just kind of relay messages or channel for her directly it just depends on what she wants to do honestly she's welcome to either um, and she can flow in and out now because I've been working with her for so long and used to her energy that it's effortless at this point, which is really nice because it used to be quite intense for me every time she would come in and out. Um, so, uh, and aside from that, of course, Venus, uh, will be connecting with Venus, whether I'll be channeling for her in either of those capacities. Like I said, same thing with Gaia. We'll, you know, we'll see. I did connect with her, um, two nights ago. Um, she kept coming through, um, her and Gaia kept coming through and really wanting me to do some artwork. So I painted, this is watercolor painting that I did. I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, and I just followed direction 
and pretty soon, um, well not pretty soon, it took a little while, <laughs> it took quite a bit, it took a good like 45 minutes and I would say before I started to pick up on what was was meant to, to be all connected together. So anyhow, um, and then, and the, and the colors are super vibrant, I know it's, you can't really see that in the video, but they're really, really, really bright colors. Um, I love, I mean, yeah, pictures and video really doesn't do it justice because the colors, these are new paints that I got and they are absolutely, they're Paul Rubin watercolor paints and they're super, super um, bright and I absolutely love them. So anyway, um, I have been connecting with Venus. She did come through. She wanted me to do that artwork the other day. I was late and I did it and it felt so good. So aside from that, I know we'll be connecting, you know, with both Venus and, and Gaia, obviously. Um, the star points are all about when Venus and Earth come together in a, a Kazimi, which is, which means to kiss. And that's when they make their, the points of the star or the petal or the pen, you know, the pentagram, depending on how you want to to call it. I like all three um, because they all are a bit different in energy and all three of those attributes have been put upon that formation, the pentagram, the star, uh, and the rose. So I love stars. I love roses. Um, and I love the, well, pentagrams and stars, but it depends, you know, language better. Stop, stop, stop. Got a cat thing going on here. Um, but language does matter. You know, the, the energy of pentagram versus the energy of star are very, very different. And they evoke different um, feelings within us, depending on, on what we're thinking about. Um, hi, Bob. Somebody has a, a donut on his head because... He has a sore in his leg that he won't stop looking, and I've decided enough is enough, and we're just going to do the cone until he's better. Um, anywho, so he's not happy. <laughs> Poor pretty boy. Okay, so anyway, there you go. There's all the information that you're going to need. Um, and even if you don't have any of that under your belt, haven't read the, the, the newsletters or watched any of the videos, you could still do this. Um, do the, do this, uh, pick a card with me and, and we'll, and we'll just, uh, meet up when we're meant to meet up. Right. Okay. So let's get going, going without, whoop. Okay, let's get going without any further ado. Um, we are going to get the first, let's see how far in we are, 18 minutes. So we're gonna get the first reading going now. So if you picked the first reading, welcome. And here we go. First card we're gonna um, pull is the Divine Feminine. I have shuffled a lot. I have saged. I'm still being guided to shuffle. One more I'm hearing. One more. And from there. So with the intention of connecting with the energies that are incoming, these balancing, heart opening, um, love, feeling energies for ourselves, for the collective, for the ones that we know of our soul family, the ones that we don't know yet, the ones that we'll never know that we're still connected to and we'll always have, you know, have that connection to for all of, of that, um, for moving forward for highest possible timelines and all that good stuff. Um, have that in your heart to get and receive the information that you are meant to receive at this time. And let's see if I could turn this down. There we go. Turn that down and um, let you guys see what we're doing here. Okay. Ready? Let's do this. 
I'm feeling the left side here and the left side again. And left side again. Then we are left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. Let's move these. One, two, three. Um, yep, it's going to be this card. That one just keeps, I mean, it's kind of sticking out anyway, but it's definitely sticking out to me. So that is our first card. Now we're going to get our cards for the Moonology. Moonology, and we will do the same thing here, which is split the deck in two. I'm gonna go right this time, split the deck in two. Again, right. Interesting. And then let's see what we get here. Oops, have a hard time. Yeah, and right again. Interesting. Okay, oh, only have four cards out with this. We're going to go with that one. Okay, so let's see what we get. <gasps> Me again. Let's see what we get. First up is... Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance. I love it. I choose to feel abundant. Wealth is an inside job. Oh my goodness. That is something that is, excuse me, we'll talk about more with this Venus star point because hello, it's 10, 22, 2022. Oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> And um, look at she's got a lotus. Um, oh my gosh, look at that like crown she has on. She does look abundant. She looks absolutely beautiful. Um, <clears throat> so with all these twos with this date, uh, it's major. Hi, Kitty. It's major abundance energies, major energies that have to do with abundance and creation and unity and love and all of that stuff. Um, you know, fractaling out, multiplying, um, you know, all the good things, dividing and multiplying. So Lakshmi, Lakshmi, Lakshmi or Lakshmi? Yeah, I'm putting an extra eye in there. Lak. Shimmy. That's why I'm going to say it. Lakshmi. Okay. And then what did we get? The new moon in cancer. You and your loved ones are safe. Love it. You and your loved ones are safe. Okay. So there we go. Um, and let's get into the book um, and read page 72 which is also a nine, also the year I was born. So I kind of like the number 72. It's about the nines, about light workers. So wonderful. I love that she starts on this page. Okay. Um, who is she? So I choose to feel abundant. Wealth is an inside job. Who, who she is? Lakshmi personifies the splendor and affluence that arrives when we align our every action with what the soul desires most for us. Reverence for the Hindu goddess Lakshmi 
dates back to the first millennium BCE. She is known as the goddess of wealth, fortune, and prosperity. Her name is derived from the Sanskrit root lox and laksa, meaning to know, to understand, or to have a goal. She is the wife of the Hindu god Vishnu and has many festivals that are celebrated in her honor. In the ancient Indic epic, the Rana, Ramayana, Lakshmi, Lakshmi is said to have miraculously sprung from the foam of an ocean of milk churned by the gods. Lakshmi is often pictured in her iconic, iconic, iconography holding the lotus she is symbolic of the fact that great beauty arises from the dark richness richness of the earth under any circumstances she is the symbol she oh sorry this is symbolic of the fact that great beauty arises from the dark rich, richness of the earth under any circumstances. I'm having a hard time with regular words. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. I, I'm going to try to do better. Good Lord. Um, <laughs> all that's needed is the auspicious or divine timing for the lotus to come into bloom. Her essence then is about understanding the goal in life to realize the abundance of the soul. I love it. When your soul selects her card, abundance looks different to each of us. Some people have incalculable material wealth but are bereft of a sense of purpose or a greater vision for their life and so are left feeling lost. While others are considered poor in financial wealth but walk around radiating love and the kind of light that has an in... in Oh, it, an inestimable worth. Like All the hard words happen to be on two lines, which isn't making it any easier for me right now. I swear. Uh, Lakshmi is the auspiciousness that begins to bloom in our life when we align our every action with the work our soul has come here to do. Yes! That's the name of the game, man. <laughs> That's the name of the game. You've already won if you have aligned and are going into alignment, greater, greater alignment with what you're meant to do. And every step closer and closer and deeper and deeper in that brings more and more abundance and less and less fear. It is magical trust me it is amazing and that's what she's talking about here Lakshmi reminds us of the ultimate goal which is not making money but being able to know our true bliss what makes us feel lit up like a glow stick while we're doing it what work doesn't feel like work at all Lakshmi is a is a wink to find Lakshmi is a wink to find that vocation, that bliss, so that what is within us comes into full bloom through something we can do and show the world. Lakshmi represents both the gold we can hold in our hands and the gold we can become by doing the work that feeds our soul. She's the reminder that true abundance doesn't come from our bank statement. It comes from a state of mind we enter when we know we are contributing great worth to the world in the effort of becoming more love. Oh, I love it so much. Soul voice meditation. When do I feel the most abundant? When do I feel the most abundant? That will definitely, that's like basically, you know, it's reverse engineering. When, when do I feel the most abundance is a great clue as to what to do more of and how to focus your energy and intention. I choose to feel abundant. Wealth is an inside job. I love that so 
much. <clears throat> I love that so much. Holy moly. I do. I absolutely love that because it's it's just true. I love everything that's true. So it's just true. Um, let's see her again. Wait, where's a good spot? There we go. So beautiful, so radiant, so peaceful, so centered. Oh my God, this artwork is just amazing. Um, love this lotus. Look at that. Look at that. I've been thinking it. I've been lotus. Yeah, the lotus energy has come through quite a bit recently. Um, so it's really cool to see it again here all lit up. I just had this as I was reading this. I had this vision of just this huge lotus on my back, like a tattoo. I don't have any tattoos, but and I've never considered having a lotus tattoo, let alone humongous, like my entire upper back. But it's just this vision I got when I was reading when I was reading this, that, and it was just really strong. So anyway, I absolutely love this message. I hope you do too. Um, it is so so powerful, so rich, so so matter of fact and true that you know it, it, wealth is an inside job. Abundance is a a state of being that comes and is directed by the soul. And, you know, wealth and richness and luxury and all that stuff is, is really just like the continual prizes we get to help our soul and to give us um, comfort and joy and to not have to worry and be in fear. Because we can't do our soul work if we're in fear. Think about it. If you're worried about money and finances, you know, it's it's hard to, to f be able to fully focus on what you're meant to do. It just is. I mean, it did say here there's people who have a ton of money and they're and they're sad because they don't have direction they don't have their they're not aligned with their life purpose even if they have money and then it said that people who are considered poor can radiate love and be very abundant in those ways but ideally we can merge you know that with with this you know also abundant um life and where we are just so in alignment with the abundance matrix and with this energy like she brings in, the goddess of abundant, uh, abundance. Lakshmi, I can't talk today. I apologize. What a day to be doing video when I can't talk. Lakshmi, I think I'm, I'm just a little out of rhythm with what's coming through and what my face can do. <laughs> Honestly, we're going to break it down. What's going on here? Uh, <laughs> and I spend a lot of time being quiet. So when I'm talking, sometimes it's like, well, I haven't talked in quite some time. I, I spend a lot of time in solitude and a lot of time being quiet. So it's kind of funny. Um, okay. So anyway, there we go with that. Let's go to new moon in cancer. Um... Oh, I saw you. There you are. New moon in Cancer. I just took off my glasses, but I need them again. Let's do that real quick. Whew. You and your loved ones are safe. New moon in Cancer. There's a new start coming in your private life. Something is rising up in connection with the people and places you hold dearest. This can be to do with a member of your family, flatmate, or moving house. If you're hoping to move forward, if you're hoping to move forwards with something special in your private life, this card comes to you as a message that you can do it. 
If you've been neglecting your family, it's time to reconnect with them. If you've been neglecting yourself, you need to take better care of yourself and nurture yourself more. If your insecurity is holding you back, that's something for you to work on now. Doing so could bring you your heart's desire. Attune to the moon. Make sure you put family first. Let me remind you what this looks like. Sorry, I didn't do that sooner. Make sure you put family first and additional meanings to this card. Let someone get a bit closer to you. A new cycle is starting for your child or children. It's time to renew your goals. Have they changed? Meditation will help you banish your insecurities. Spending time near water will bring you peace and answers. There's that cancer energy, um, but still... Spending time near water will always bring you peace and, and answers every day, no matter what. So keep that in mind. And teaching. The new moon in Cancer can be a super emotional time. The moon is all about emotions and Cancer is a water sign and also very emotional. Saying that, the moon is very happy in the sign of Cancer. It's one of her two home signs along with Aquarius. So whenever you pull it, this card suggests that whatever happens next will be in your favor it's especially positive for family matters nice family matters also um home stability anything to do with with um making you feel grounded and stable and um loved and cared for and supported and all that good stuff so family right when family is at its highest vibration that's what you're going to get with family. And um, that's what you get with your guides and guardians. That's what you get with your guardian angels and all your guard, um, guides and guardians. And um, soul family members, those who, you know, you weren't born to, not of blood, but of spirit connection. And um, to really lean into these connections, really allow yourself to get vulnerable, to share, to open up, to, to uh, come out of the hermit cave and, and, or at least invite others in, that sort of thing too. And I absolutely love these two cards together. This Cancer New Moon energy and Lakshmi because of just uh like they were it's talking about a new start new beginnings so it's a lot of unknown there and if you're feeling abundant you're feeling stable you're feeling good you don't have worries about stuff when it has to do with money and and things can just go and roll easy effortlessly stress-free you have all the resources to start that new venture to make that next move whatever it is so i am really stoked with these cards so happy to have pulled them and to be connected to them myself of course um in my own ways so there we go those are the two cards and i am before um well actually i'm gonna keep them i don't need to put them in because we're not gonna pull them again we're gonna get different cards for the next um the next read so there we go that is the first reading thank you for joining me for it and we will get right into the second one now okay so let's do this with the second reading for this beautiful venus star point event whoopsie <laughs> that didn't work uh <clears throat> I'd really love to get rid of this broken my broken my frogs. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, for the for the throat in my frog. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And by the way, the music in the background is in 888 hertz. And just like for the first reading, please get into a line with all these beautiful love, unity, um, divine union, 
new start, balancing, <clears throat> star-filled, light-filled energies that are happening with the Venus star point before and as we get started. Oh, goodness. All right, let's do it. Gonna go with right. Left. It's coming through fast. Hearing right again. And we have looks like one, two, three, four, five cards here. And real fast, we're going with that third card, the one in the center. We're going to put that off to the side and we're going to grab the Moonology deck minus the new moon in Cancer. I'm being told to separate and keep them separated, which is interesting. <clears throat> so we're not going to, that just makes it real clear. We're not going to get different cards for each. I mean, we are going to get different cards for each reading. <laughs> wow, my brain. A lot of shit is getting rearranged in my body and my brains. So, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's going to be quite a chore. Okay, here we go. Let's go left this time. Right. And right again. Alrighty. One, two, three, four, five. Same thing. Feeling that card there. Okay, let's see what we got here, dear ones. Those of you who chose the second reading, these are your cards. Teresa of Avila, Our Lady of the Interior Life. I trust the answers I find within me. I know that the presence of love is real. Beautiful. So she has a quill. She has a dove with her. Um, Teresa of Avila, or Lady of the Interior Life. Okay, and we got a note. Don't let your past hold you back. South node. Yeah, the south node is all about the past. What needs to be released? What karmic business you come into this world and existence and timeline in with this current life of yours that you're you're in right now? And the South Node is all about what is unfinished business that needs to get processed in this lifetime. So let's start with our Teresa of Avila. Page she is on. Um, 35. There we go. Okay, one more time. She's so pretty, so peaceful, really beautiful. Very different energy from Lakshmi. La Lakshmi. I have a hard time with her name. Okay, I'm having a hard time with everything. Alrighty. Um, I trust the answers I find within me. I know that the presence of love is real. <clears throat> All right. With passion and conviction, Teresa of Avila can access to the love and truth available to us whenever we turn inward. St. Teresa was born in Avila, Spain in 1515. As an adolescent, she experienced many illnesses and when, was confined to a bed, which allowed her to begin to explore her own thoughts. 
She read every book she could find on spiritual exploration and contemplative contemplative prayer. By the time she was a young adult, she knew she wanted to dedicate her life to the interior interior world. She entered a Carmelite convent in Avila in 1535. She increased the emphasis on contemplative prayer and eventually reformed the Carmelite order, which was later joined by St. John of the Cross. Over the course of her life, St. Teresa found, founded 17 convents throughout Spain. Wow. At the age of 44, she began to have a series of visions that convinced her that Jesus Christ appeared to her in bodily form and yet remained invisible to the eye. These visions lasted for two years and would inform her books, especially the spiritual masterpiece, The Interior the interior castle which charts the ascent of the soul as an inner journey through the seven mansions or states of being that exist within us ultimately teresa wrote in the hope of assisting her sisters in the convent to also reach the innermost castle where god dwells in the soul and reminded them that we ourselves are the castle and that the door of entry into this castle is prayer and meditation her own personal spiritual experience is at the root of her instruction the closer she gets to the seventh mansion where the soul ascends which requires going further inward the stronger the light is she describes the ways to discern the voice and presence of the divine within us and the certainty of God that arrives that cannot be explained or doubted. This inner journey was so significant to St. Teresa because she believed that God didn't care about the magnitude of anything we do, but rather the amount of love that we do with it, that we do it with. Pope John the Sixth named St. Teresa a doctor of the church in 1970. Her spiritual writings are considered integral to the Spanish Renaissance and to the history of Christian mysticism. When your soul selects her card, St. Teresa is a call for the importance of the interior of life. She knew intimately about the spiritual wealth we all possess and have access to if we're willing to go inward. She not only emphasizes the need to meditate and to pray in order to reach that inner innermost castle where the soul waits for us, but she also instructed the sisters of her convent to on how to discern the presence of the soul or of a saint or of a holy person that is giving us wisdom from within us. Oh, I love that. She had a bookmark that supposedly read, if you have God, you will want for nothing. God alone suffices. This synthesizes the wisdom of her experience. Nothing less than divine love will satiate a seeker, especially once you have met with it from within. That is so true. So true. She urges us to meditate, to pray, to go inward and meet with the presence of the soul. And then she asks for us to believe that it is real and that the answers we find are real. She asks us to move that inner truth out into the world with confidence and conviction. Soul meditation. What does love feel like in my body? Oh, that's a good one. What does soul feel like in my body? Intention. I trust the answers I find within me. I know that the presence of love is real. Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh, I love that. This is so beautiful. Um, and the big, big message here that came up again and again with Teresa of Avila is, uh, on pages, by the way, um, on pages, I think, um, it was, and I lost it, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. So, um, there's that. Okay. So, 
really coming through again and again in that message and feeling it again through me as I read it is about prayer and meditation. So, um, and for me, prayer is just really talking to communion, communion, community, community communication holy shit communication and communing with my guides and guardians with those like um like rabbit like jesus like uh like mary magdalene like the archangels i mean to mother father god to gaia whoever you want to connect to and and talk to and ask for help and and ask for um guidance and and release what you have going on and just surrender to this beautiful ride and allow for every possibility that you're that you can be connected to to con to you know find their their ways without you getting in the way of that this is about love this is about going within this is about faith um so this message is just like you know it's this venus star point is really <clears throat> if you pick this reading this venus star point is really going to get you heart centered get you wanting to really deeply connect with your soul with your purpose with your destiny with how you need to heal what you need to heal what you need to forgive who you need to connect to on both sides of the veil part of what was said there is that she helped people understand what was divine what was or who was somebody to listen to to guide you um so also that's part of it too being open to be guided in whatever way you're meant to be guided but there's something there here about that about it just not you not being on this ride solo um and having um community friends um somebody like me a guide to take you through the you know to to help with you know bringing in the light to guide you through through darkness of the unknown which is always um you know what kind of uh is a little bit scary for people sometimes you know this whole spirituality and going deep and all this stuff that is connected with it um it's just easier to do when you have somebody who's connected, who's been there, who can help you, um, who you could trust, who you could talk about with, you know, anything with. And, uh, you know, that's sometimes if you're really on, you know, a true spiritual path, you're going to have those that are going to help guide you that are in this dimension with you of course our guides and guardians are so important to us but we but we also need people in the real world and so um follow your guidance with that whether it's me or somebody else whether it's you know going to to do reiki or having your astrology um read to you you know different readings you could get whether it's finding you know a, a healer a shaman a spirit you know spiritual guide um there's so many different ways that you can go about being mentored um being guided and and so there is no right or wrong to that it's just everybody has a different set of circumstances timing path and all that stuff but that is strong with this card as well because this is a lot about her guiding others her teaching others her creating 17 you know convents and that's just you know schools for the divine and for for learning about the soul and about love and how everything is connected to love and all of that so she was this this guide this messenger and so she is about connecting you to somebody that 
you know, she would, you know, she would take you to kind of thing. You know, she's not around anymore, but she's going to guide you to somebody. So follow that guidance in whatever way that works for you. Okay, next. Whew, south node. Let's find where the south node is. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Full moons, new moons. Ah, there we go. 114. There we go. Okay, again, south node, don't let your past hold you back. Great advice. Great advice. It most certainly can in different ways. Okay, page 114. Let's do it. The south node, like the north node, is a karmic point, but it's opposite to the north node and relates to the past, perhaps even to past lives. Whatever you're going through and whatever you're asking about, there's a chance that age-old programming and conditioning is stopping you from achieving all that you might. Do you feel stuck in something? This card often comes as a sign that the situation or relationship you're asking about has somehow become suffocating, even toxic. It suggests that someone, you even, need needs to be released. That there's some kind of addiction going on or an unhealthy attachment that needs to be sorted out. One thing is for sure, when you get this card, you're being challenged to make some changes, even if staying where you are feels easier and safer. Attune to the moon. I release the past. Additional meanings for this card. A relationship is karmic and has played out across many lifetimes. Your attraction to someone may be verging on the obsessive. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And the teaching. The south node is where the moon crosses the ecliptic going south. On the horoscope chart, it shows us that we are likely to become obsessed with, or sorry, what we are likely to become obsessed with. But, oh, sorry. But which will probably do us little or no good. Okay, so what we'll be obsessed with, but not in a good way. Um, the south node is the karmic astrological point that reminds us of the well-known phrase, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love that. Um, so true. <laughs> it's so true. Can't expect a different outcome if you do the same shit. So this is talking about what is in your life that you need to let go of. What is holding you back? This could be a person. This could be a job. This could be a home. This could be, um, you know, even what you're going to school for. Uh, you know, definitely any kind of personal relationship. Um, if it's been an on again, off again, should I stay? Should I go? I have left. I have come back even kind of situation. Um, this is going to be the time where it's going to be like done. Gonzo. Goodbye. End of story for realsies this time. Um, and that's a great thing. That's a wonderful thing. And I love that these two are together because this going inward life of the interior connecting with soul is going to help you with these choices and then what comes with it and and this is such a great opportunity with this venus star point for work like this to tap into you know this is libra is about balance venus is about love so this is love and balance and and clearing out what's out of balance and getting things into balance. That's what this is about. Again, it could be about the, this, your most recent past, which would be your, your current life, or the, the more distant past, which would be karmic. It's also pointing to, um, you know, kind of going around and around with this theme, not only in this lifetime, but in past lifetimes. Remember, when you heal in this lifetime, when you make those changes in this lifetime, you are also healing those other lifetimes. Because the truth of the matter is, is that other lifetimes are not behind this one. 
they are stacked with this one. Time isn't linear. It's a matrix. It's more goes up and down than side to side. And so your lifetimes are built on top of each other and happening at the same time. So when this lifetime is, um, is healing through karmic lessons and soul family that we're doing this, you know, working shit out with, when she, you know, imagine that like turns on a beam of light, of healing light that you've created and you've um, assimilated to with your soul. It's been healed. It's been rectified. It's been put together, creating a stronger soul vibe for your whole soul self. It's going to shine that light up and down the entire stack, the infinite stack of your lifetimes. So as you heal one, you heal all. That doesn't just go for here in, in the physical plane. That goes for you personally. When you work with yourself, as you heal one here, you heal all of your lifetimes when it comes to that thing. So imagine that. Imagine that how what you're doing here in this lifetime is helping yourself in other lifetimes with that exact same type of theme. And with those exact same circumstances with those soul family members that could be connected to that at the same time, right? So you're creating this loop of energy. You heal, they heal, and then as they heal, you heal, and then it goes through all of the stack of, of lifetimes at the same time. And as you do that, those that you're connected to within all of those lifetimes, they're also getting healed and so on and so on and so on. Pretty cool. So this is big time. This is not just think about, you know, what's going on that, you know, is just right here in the now, but really expand this out to your entire lifetime here. And then how that might resonate for you when you think about what's been repeating or what you have not been able to walk away from. So that is really powerful because once that is figured out, associated, acknowledged, um, released, and then integrated with the new energies and assimilated to that, you're going to be in a whole different place for yourself big time. So this is fantastic. And if it's about, um, you know, uh, switching, you know, switching jobs or moving or doing things like that, really think about where you've been, what you've learned there, what has happened, how you've, um, how you've evolved, how you've healed, what is still painful, what you wish for, what you, what you already received that you've wished for, why it feels like this is the end of the road here, wherever here is, that it's, that things are now opening up into, in a different direction in many different ways, possibly to take you, to help you make decisions as you move forward, as you change things. And then think about the possibilities of what those those things will be as you let go of one and open up to the other. It's a state of being. It's a state of, you know, your reality as you know it. What happens in your everyday life? Who's connected? Where it's going on? How it's playing out? All of the things. These are big, massive changes that we're talking about. Not the little things. Not like even like, I don't even know. Not like okay, you know, I've been putting off cleaning out my garage, so I'm going to do that. That's awesome. But we're talking bigger than that. We're talking bigger changes, bigger, like, you know, like, okay, like, like it said, you know, just because it's been there and you're used to it, it's like, and you've been, you've made certain adjustments to stuff or you've, um, I just, you've adapted doesn't mean that that should continue on that you know gets to the point where it's like the last straw that you know broke the camel's back kind of thing is what is like no more there really is when i when i tap into this energy it's like the road has ended it it's very much like energy that's um 
Like it says road closed, but you can still go <laughs> for a while before it really is like nothing left. It's like we're past that point where it said road closed, but there's still some road left to just like kind of sort your shit out <laughs> to make that adjustment. So that's what we're looking at here with this. Okay, so Teresa of Avila, the lady of the interior and don't let your past hold you back. Big, powerful cards. Okay, so there we go with our second reading and now for the last one, the last reading, we're going to start over with the Divine Feminine. So welcome, welcome to your third reading. Um, so maybe you did, maybe you were one of those people who was, was like, I need, a, I need all of these. Maybe it's just this one. So this is the third reading for the Venus Star Point. So welcome if you picked this reading. We're going to uh, shuffle some here. Please connect with these heart opening, unifying, divine union, balancing energy, abundance energies, divine feminine energies for Venus and the moon and all that good stuff. We are not putting back the cards that we got from the other readings, which is what I was told to do. So we're leaving those out as we work with these with a new reading. So we don't have double, um, any double cards coming up with this. And the last two are very awesome, very powerful, very deep. So I, you know, these have been fantastic. Now, I'm going to do the last one. I'm excited. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to go with the left side. And right side. And one more here. right side again and we are left with one two three four and five cards okay yeah Okay, took a second there because I was feeling a couple of these, but we're going with this last card here. And then we are going to push that to the side while we do the uh, uh, Moonology. You know, you can't rush it. If it's not clear, you just have to wait and give it a second. I almost felt like pulling out my pendulum, but decided I didn't need it. <clears throat> yeah, when I'm feeling multiple, multiple things at the same time, the pendulum just helps, helps get things clear, but we were good. Okay, last shuffle, there we go. Let's do it. Okay. Go with the right side and the left side and the left side. And that's it. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. And 
and feeling this third card. So we're gonna pull that out and put those over there. And let's see what we got first. Let's see. Green Tara, the Buddha of enlightened action. My soul informs my every step. I do what my heart compels me to do. Yes, oh God, she's beautiful for being green. Beautiful, beautiful divine feminine here. The Buddha of enlightened action. Wow. My soul informs my every step. I do what my heart compels me to do. I wonder if this is going to be some kind of full moon card. Nope. It's a new moon in Leo. Confidence is your key to success. Well, these two definitely go together. My soul informs my every step. I do what my heart compels me to do. And confidence compels your every step. Yeah, those definitely go together. They even have similar colors. You can see that. Anyway, there we go. Okay, Green Tara. I've never seen this card before, so I'm excited about it. Um, I had seen before the, the other two, I have pulled those cards before this one is new to me. So where, 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 there we are. Page 113, which is a divine number. The 13th, 13 is a divine number, a divine feminine number, I should say. Um, the 13 green Tara. Green Tara embodies the emboldened state that overcomes fear and allows us to take action on what we know is right. Tara is a female Buddha in the Vajrana Buddhist tradition. She is known as the mother of liberation because her name is derived from the root to cross. Tara assists all beings in crossing the ocean of suffering to liberation. According to the Tara Tantra eons ago, Tara incarnated as a king's daughter. She showed such spiritual excellence and such profound compassion that she impressed a group of monks. They told her that they would pray for her to be reborn a man so that she could reach enlightenment. <laughs> She responded by enlightening them. She told them that there's no such thing as male and female. The ideas, projections, and expectations that we superimpose onto the male form and the female form are not real. They are contrived. From form is emptiness and emptiness is form. Tara vowed then and there before all the monks that she would remain a female Buddha for all lifetimes until all beings were liberated from the illusion that a person's sex determines their ability to become enlightened. Tara has four different types of enlightened activity and divine attributes depicted symbolically through the colors red, white, black, yellow, and green. Green Tara, green Tara is Tara's embodiment of compassionate action or enlightened action. Her green color signifies vigor and vitality. Her mudra also represents vitality and the purity of our life force. The prana mudra, uh, our life force, the prana mudra. <clears throat> she is the action we take from a deeply rooted place within our heart. She is the energy that seeks to act in enlightenment with what we with what will free us as we liberate others. She is energy that seeks to act in enlightenment with what will free us as we liberate others. I love that. When your soul selects her card, Green Tara is that sacred nudge to get moving, to do what it is your soul compels you to do. Don't sit with an idea or a project any longer. Take action on it. Don't think about a friend who keeps coming into your heart. Go bring her dark chocolate or send her a love letter. Don't wait to express your love to someone you've needed to. Go now. Tell the truth. Let your feet 
be moved by what has been caged within you. Let your wisdom shift into inspired action. Tara is the message that the time for action is now. There's nothing to wait for and no person you need to become before doing what you've come here to do. Start small. Let the soul lead, not the ego. It's not the grandeur of the gesture or effort. It's the amount of love something is done with that ever matters. Oh my God, that's so true. Makes me emotional. Whew. There are so many injustices in the world, so much suffering that it's easy to get stuck in the molasses of helplessness. The brilliant Burmese diplomat, uh, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi says, if you're feeling helpless, help someone. I love that. Green Tar is about aligning what moves us to tears with compassionate action. She's the push to do something, anything that might elevate the suffering of others. Oh, sorry, alleviate the suffering of others. In the process of taking action with love and from love, we also liberate ourselves. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Absolutely freaking beautiful. Soul voice meditation. What does my soul want me to take action on now? Intention. My soul informs my every step. I do what my heart compels me to do. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, goodness gracious. So, <laughs> <sighs> overcoming fear. The emboldened state that overcomes fear. You know, if you're around me enough, you know I talk about letting go and releasing fear, deprogramming from fear, the illusion of fear, and how that, how so many things we can be afraid of or in fear of we don't even register it's just a part of our programming a part of our consciousness um it's so deeply embedded in so many ways uh and bit by bit as we align with our soul we release fear i talked about this in the other uh the last i believe reading and um it's coming up here again in a little bit different way um once again there's green tara aligning with your soul what your um so your your soul informs you of what to do and you do what your heart compels you to do. So it's about what you're meant to do, your desire, your destiny, what lights you up. Um, I love that this is also about deep female empowerment. So it, it, this would be also for those of you who may feel repressed. Um, by being female or an advocate for feminism and things like that this is to get heart aligned with that 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 changing the outside world and and what what others and how others may decide or think for you or what you're about or what you can do or or how powerful you can be or not be really is a reflection of of the inside out <clears throat> and the outside in I love that she was this advocate for this equality and to dissolve the illusion that there really is anything, um, you know, different that any one of us can do regardless of gender. Um, definitely, especially enlightenment. Um, but the monks had been programmed to think that to think that way. And I loved her declaration about you know, just committing to saying, you know what, I'm going to be a female in every incarnation until it's understood what is what the illusion is about, you know, the, what you can or cannot do um, from a gender standpoint, you know. Um, so this is a beautiful recognition. This is a beautiful understanding of 
the power of the divine feminine that's coming through. So if you chose this reading, please know that your divine feminine aspect is going to get into greater balance, is going to, you know, everything to do with the divine feminine, um, the nurturing aspects, the creative aspects, the expressionate aspects, the, um, the, the goddess love, passion, sensuality, um, mother, lover, energies of being in, in the sweetness of, of passion and love and creation, all the beautiful things, you know, really is going to be big time with this energy. There's going to be one or more events that's going to happen um, sometime in the near future and be echoed through time that's really going to drop a lot of the external and the ego and the fear and the control and the need to be this whatever thing you've decided that you are a person or personality and the soul is going to emerge in a greater and more powerful way for sure um this could be tied to other people or events or choices that you make that is you know is kind of like both sides of the coin this you're able to do this because of this energy and because of this energy it's going to you know uh multiply itself as it keeps going so this is really really beautiful very empowering soul connection body connection heart connection um, your desires, your wants, the need to create and be and express in the world is what is the most important thing that's coming through with these messages right now in this time period for you. So there's that. Again, beautiful green Tara. Um, I absolutely love the, these energies. Your soul informs your very steps. So the clearer, the more grounded, the more meditation you do, the more self-care you do, the more that you want to connect to your soul and your guardians for support, for direction, for clarity, um, and whatever tools that help you do that from going on hikes to sitting in the sun to taking a bath to working with crystals to doing artwork to whatever that it may be to communing with other f females to getting close with other females to rely and love and open up into that beautiful feminine sisterhood that sort of thing if you are a a, a female um especially um if you're a male to open up to that energy within yourself to not put walls and blocks up that makes you feel more vulnerable that makes you feel more emotional that makes you feel like expressing your love and your care and your empathy and your soft side if you are a man especially um more and more men are being so much more willing to share their deepest emotions and thoughts and and to cry in front of each you know the world and each other and and to really own their emotions as something that's a good thing is happening and has been happening more and more and more and so that energy is really truly happening now to balance out any of you men out there um so really accept that you know really just um integrate with that energy that's coming through with this venus star point today because whoa wait it's strong okay <laughs> with that with that we have confidence is your key to success the leo new moon yeah definitely if there is um a confident uh oh those are moon face cards let's where the let me just go here new moon in leo page 50 oh right there okay that was easy so once again confidence is your key to success new moon in leo love it love it love it 
Okay, this card heralds the start of a new cycle for you when you're going to look and feel more gorgeous, more in the spotlight, more like you have something worth showing off. If you want someone's attention, this card says it's coming. <laughs> However, this may not happen all by itself. You have to be willing to do your bit. That means being proud of who you are and what you have to offer. Think of yourself as the king or queen of the jungle and carry yourself accordingly. This card is also a great omen if you're asking about a creative project you're working on. Alternatively, you can herald oh, it can herald good news or a, a new or a new start for your children. Attune to the moon. Make time to have fun. Additional meanings for this card. It's time for you to show the world what you've got shine your light have some pride spoil yourself you've earned it you've turned someone's head or will <laughs> the teaching leo is the sign of the big and brave-hearted lion of pride and showmanship and flirting the energy around the new moon in Leo and therefore around this card, whenever you pick it, is hot and generous. The energy loves itself and so should you. If you've been too much of a wallflower, this new moon card and the Leo new moon comes as a reminder that you need to be proud of who you are. I love this. These energies together. Oh my God. I could have spent a whole week trying to be like, hmm, if I want to talk about confidence and getting soul connected and having courage to be yourself, what cards would I pick? These two would definitely be it. And you see my excitement because it is so rich and powerful. Get soul connected. Your soul guides you, your heart, follow your heart's desire, do what your heart tells you to do and have confidence in yourself while is just like every side of this. And, and what will feel so good for you. This also talks about new beginnings. This talks about, well, it's a new moon. So every new moon is a new beginning, right? But about projects, creative projects, um, new hot relationships, getting people's attention, shining bright, letting yourself be seen, not being in the shadows anymore, coming out, really allow, really just going... I love this so much. Shit. I love this so much because what it says is, you know what? I'm going to let my freak flag fly, right? Like this is who my soul is. This is what I'm meant to do. This is who I am, whatever that is for me. And my heart is telling me that that is true. So it's not just what my soul is selling, saying to me. It's not just where I'm being led. It's my heart confirms it these this is what lights me up this is what feels good i'm not being dragged into it and if the component to, that you of not wanting to do it of being afraid or trepidatious of it is about being seen is about kind of letting it out is about you know putting yourself on stage in a way that you know if you've learned the violin and it's always been the violin but you really need to break dance is to go throw the violin and get out on stage and break dance and have everybody go, oh shit, you know, like what is happening? I didn't know he or she could do that. And yet that's way the way that you need to express. And that's what needs to do. And to have the courage to pull in the courage from this, from this lion, from this Leo energy that is so ready to just Step in and just like think of the lion of the lioness walking through the jungle or you know through the they are not in jungles they're in the, the <laughs> they're in the desert and the pride and the flatlands I always think of them in, in jungles lions aren't really I mean they can be it's a different kind of jungle but anyway I digress um <laughs> think of them as they're walking you know they are for the most part you know the quintessential archetypal lion is chest out head up looking around and everybody just goes at just steps out of the way notices what's going on feels that intense energy and nothing and nobody is questioning 
that authenticity, that power, that courage, that strength, that determination to be what it is a lion is meant to be. And the same goes for us, for you. And uh, Green Tara is about tapping in with the soul and where the soul is trying to direct you regardless of your history your experiences your personality your ego the soul is there as the captain of your ship and your heart is the navigator and this brings it all together with the courage to accept both things equally and move into the future in an empowered, fully embodied way. Is it easy to get there? Does it happen overnight? No and no. But accepting that this is how it's meant to be and these are the messages coming through for you, hopefully will embolden you to take bigger leaps to dive and leap further from the cliff to to you know if you've been going down to 10 feet you know go down to 20 or 30 with the depths of yourself and what you're willing to connect to don't don't be overwhelmed by your own power by your own destiny by your own soul it's just because it's not connected that it's a little scary because you don't know what's all there you don't know what it's going to force you force you to do what you're gonna what it's going to mean for you and that's where a lot of people start to slow down and back up and make excuses in so many different ways to not you know keep big steps going further and deeper into themselves because where they've already been has been overwhelming so to keep going is overwhelming what's next how big can this go how far and how deep what's going to come up how what am i going to be guided to change next <laughs> what am i going to be guided to express and to put out in the world next if i don't move forward then i don't know and i'm not responsible for it so i'll just stay here and with this venus star point in libra it's going no honey not anymore we need to balance this out you can't run from yourself any longer enough is enough we're reaching the final few strides of 2022 with this massive moment and paradigm shift this is the time to make those changes that you know you need to do this is who you are. You're this mystical, magical, divine being who's meant to be fully embodied and live a magical life with your psychic awareness, with your healing powers, with your channeling ability, with your artistic um, talents and whatever they are, with your supportive nature, with your leadership skills, with all of that you're meant now to um it's like you've outgrown the current costume or uniform you've grown up and everything needs to change the inner and the outer structure of your beingness um and you have all the tools you are on the right path you just need to decide it's like you know, do you get up from the table or do you go all in? And the message here is to go all in. There's all the reasons to do that and none of the reasons to hold back. Be who you're meant to be. Let yourself shine. Shine for yourself. Feel what that's like. No more holding back. No more making excuses. No more, no more not being who you are to make life more comfortable for anybody else this is your story you're the main character you're the leader in your journey your destiny and this is the time to really think about the finite amount of time of of this life and how you where you want to resonate with your vibe as high as it possibly can and just allow for all the magic magic to to be in your world to come through you to be a vessel for magic for beauty for divinity for the ever and inf 
infinite abundance and love that can come through you and touch others and change the world exponentially. Yeah, I say it's time for that. <laughs> All right, that's it. Those are our three readings. Oh my God, so powerful. I love all of this so much. I'm going to take from all of these for myself um, because I kind of have no choice. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for being here with me. I love this so much and I hope that um, whether you this third reading was just yours or you listen to all of them, whatever you're guided to, that they resonate with you, please leave comments um, below and have a beautiful Venus star point. And until next time, infinite love and blessings. Don't forget the key is to create and I love you already. Bye for now. <laughs>